Mr. Speaker, thank you very much uh, for this opportunity. Uh, and I wish to thank um, my Vice Chair of PAC on, on his statement. Uh, Mr. Speaker, I remember you saying that this is a time for action. No time of, it's no time for lamenting. Uh, we have actually uh, experienced that uh, some of the governors are taking the cue of Governor for Isiolo in various committees. And I think this has to stop. Mr. Speaker, I've been around for some time and I have never seen a governor who is taking a committee of the House to court just because of appearance. It has never happened. Number two, there are summonses that has been given to the governor of Isiolo. And I see there is actually one from Labor Committee where they have instructed IG to arrest him and bring him before the committee of the House. I hope that is going to work. And if it doesn't work, then we have proved the governor for Isiolo right because he's been going around saying there is nothing Senate will do to him. Even if he fails to appear many times, Senate will do nothing to him. Mr. Speaker, that is impunity of the highest order. I have even been discussed at the, county, uh, at the Council of Governors that I'm rogue. Let me be rogue because of doing my work. Mr. Speaker, uh, before we went on recess, I read a statement on the floor of this house. And Mr. Speaker, let me be open. Ten members of staff from county government of Isiolo sat in the boardroom of the governor. They discussed on how to eliminate me. I have a clip and I have photos of those members of staff. And he has audacity to tell members of the uh, public and the newspaper that I'm lying. He's been going around saying he knows everybody in the government, DCI, EACC, and nobody is going to do anything to him. Mr. Speaker, this is a rogue governor who does nothing. Mr. Speaker, he operates from Nairobi. He's never in Isiolo. And secondly, he has no respect at all for the House of Senate. Mr. Speaker, we discussed this matter yesterday. County assembly members are in the pocket of the governors. We must have a solution to this problem where Senate can take action on those rogue governors. I thank you. Mwashimua speaker na shukuru sana kunipa na fasi hii. Wakenya wanatazama kwa makini sana yale na ujiri hapa katika jumba la Senate. Jana katika vyombo vya habari mwashimua speaker Tumeona viongozi shupavu wa Senate wakitetea gatuzi zetu ili fedha zisije chini ya bilioni mianne. Mwishmua speaker haiwezekani tuwalishe mamba watule sisi. Haiwezekani. Haiwezekani tukeshe kila uchao tukitetea wananchi wa kaunti zetu wapate pesa ili hali kuna viongozi ambao wana dana kana kwamba sisi ni kama wasukuma rukwama kwa niaba ya watu wetu hatutakubali mheshimiwa speaker iwapo senator dulo anahakika kwamba sekta ya afya imedorora wengine hapo wanatuambia sekta ya kilimo imedorora wengine wanatueleza sekta ya elimu katika county imedorora na tukiita viongozi hawa katika vyumba vyetu vya kamati hawaji wanapiga kifua na kubwata maneno yasiyoeleweka mheshimiwa speaker wakati umefika tuonane jicho kwa jicho almashauri kule mashinani tunasema mundu kwa mundu mheshimiwa speaker mheshimiwa speaker haitawezekana wakenya ambao kila siku wanadai ushuru unapanda lakini ushuru huu unaporudi katika mikono ya magavana wao ni kufurahia tunapowaita wanasema wako katika safari za ngambo. Mheshimiwa ngambo mimi najua ni Zayuni peke yake. Na iwapo wanataka kwenda Zayuni tuonane baadaye. 
Lakini wapo wanahudumia wa Kenya ni lazima na ni lazima waje wabebe misalaba yao na kwa vinyao vyao wakiri dhambi zao na iwapo wana makosa mheshimiwa speaker lazima wabebwe hobela hobela wawekwe korokoroni na mimi nataka kuambia magavana popote walipo popote walipo na kama hawanioni wataambiwa kwamba tulisema tunafungua ukurasa upya wa ugatuzi Kenya hii unapopewa pesa nyingi uwajibikaji ni wa hali ya juu tutawaandama kushoto kulia kwenye handaki mlimani kote tutafika ili ugatuzi na sisi mheshimiwa ni wasanii wa nyimbo za mafoka almashaud tunasema tutaanguka na wao mheshimiwa speaker na kisha kuanguka nao tuta finish kumalo hiyo ndio lugha vijana mashinani wanaelewa kwamba lazima ugatuzi ufanye kazi na lazima wawajibike asante mheshimiwa speaker ndugu yangu <laughs> wa migori <laughs> lazima tufanye kazi thank you mheshimiwa speaker uh, thank you mr speaker mr speaker I want to associate myself with the statement made by Senator Okenyuri on this matter as a speaker of abductions and killings in the country. The speaker, a time has come and now is that Kenyans must begin to demand real justice. Justice for the people that are being killed and justice for people that are being abducted. And the speaker, that demand goes to the government of the day. Mr. Speaker, the number of killings happening in this country must actually begin to scare everyone. And if the intention of the killer as a speaker was to scare this nation, then this nation is getting scared. Hardly a day passes, Mr. Speaker, before we hear reports of people killed, bodies recovered, people disappearing. Mr. Speaker, something must be done. On the matter of governors, as espoused by the Senator Fernandi. Mr. Speaker, we must admit, all of us, that this country is actually facing a crisis of governance. That two years into a government as a speaker, we have so many impeachment proceedings against governors and their deputies, in fact, in the history of this country and in the history of this region, two years into governance, into a government, a deputy president has been impeached. Mr. Speaker, there is a problem. That we must admit, that there is a problem, there is a crisis of governance. Mr. Speaker, I say this because governors have become so emboldened that actually they think that they own counties. And that what they say is law. Yes. Mr. Speaker, I think, I think I am one person who likes using the issue of impeachment very sparingly. But on this one, and to save the image of this house, the Speaker, lessons must be sent to governors that we mean business. For a governor to, as Senator Dula is saying, to bring together leaders in his cabinet to plot the assassination of a senator who is just doing what she is elected to do, a speaker, shame on that governor. I mean, we should never allow these things to happen as a speaker. And, and I will stand with my colleagues to demand that the governor for Isiolo 
be brought here in this house the speak thank you the speaker that the governor of Isiolo be brought before this house, Mr. Speaker. Let him now, if this is what he does, if this is how best he deals with these things, let him now go and organize the assassination of the, 47, the 67 senators of the Republic of Kenya. Mr. Speaker, it cannot be that when senators ask questions on how money is being used, they become enemies of governors. Mr. Speaker, it is weird. I, I mean, we have been in this house before, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, you have been a governor. You've been asked questions about how you have used resources of the county government of Kilifi. I've never heard anybody saying that you have threatened them for being asked questions. Mr. Speaker, uh, these governors have become semi-gods. You know, they, they have elevated themselves to the level of semi-gods that they can never be asked anything. Mr. Speaker, time has come. That the Senate must restore the dignity of this house. And I see this, the Speaker, well aware that I've seen today that there are things happening in Nandi. I've seen, the Speaker, that there are things happening in Nyandarua. The Speaker, I want to call upon members of the county assemblies to demand nothing less than accountability from their governors. I thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, Honorable Speaker. First and foremost, I want to join my colleagues also. For one, I want to support the statement from uh, Senator Izzy. Honorable Speaker, I think many times this, the House have discussed issues to do with the disappearance of Kenyans. It's actually a very unfortunate situation. And what is going on in this country I think the security of this country is going out of hand. And it's the high time that the security officers must take charge of the security of this country. There are so many uh, foreigners who have now made Kenya as a heaven, enjoying all that, they, and they do what they can do at, at, at their own way. There are so many people who run away from their countries and now hiding in this country, investing in this country the money looted from other countries. I think it is high time we need to audit who is who in Kenya, so at least we can be safe. As it is, every day you are hearing somebody has been killed. Every day people are disappearing, and you don't know who is doing it. So it's a high time that we need to take charge of this country, and security officers must take charge of this country. And we must know who is a foreigner and who is a Kenyan, because we are not able to know who is who. For the case of uh, the governors, under the speaker, as the, the, the chair of the devolution, actually, it's a very unfortunate situation. What is going on? Because this house, the Senate is there to oversight counties. It's our mandate. Even if you are called 100 times, the governors must appear to answer whatever is happening in their counties. Otherwise, as it is, what is going in this county, I mean, this country today, Money in the counties, actually, you struggle hard. You are giving them no money. You are working for them. We, give them, we fight for, their, for the rights of the, of, the, of the counties. But unfortunately, they see the senators as unfriendly uh, members. And that should not be the case. I know they are not all the same. Some of them are law-abiding. But I think what is happening now, like the likes of the solo, is very unfortunate, Honorable Speaker. The other day, I received a call from members of the, of the MCS from Solo. And some of them have been removed from the committees by the governor and his team. This is actually, you know, that's going too low. The governor has no business in the, managing the, 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 the assemblies. So far, it's a high time. And I think we have still some lacunas in the, in the, in the, in our, the, 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 the county government acts that we need to, uh, to, to look at it and rebuild. So at least we can be able to have where we can have action, take an action and take action against the governors. Because now, as even impeachment, you bring them, they're impeached, they run to, to the courts, and they're still working free, and they're free. So I think there is a, I think there is a bit of, well, I mean, we have to review the law. Just remark, I beg to support the, the statements of, of uh, Honorable Sergei. 
Thank you so much, Mr. Speaker. Okay. Uh, Mr. Speaker, uh, thank you for this opportunity. Number one, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to comment about uh, the statement by Senator S. Okenyuri. Mr. Speaker, as a young person in this country, Mr. Speaker, it breaks my heart when, when uh, constantly it seems as though we cannot be able to uh, contain the problem of abduction of young people. And Mr. Speaker, I want to just to inquire, I want to just to inquire whether there is uh, anything this House can do for resolutions that we have passed, and especially at a presidential level, Mr. Speaker, that aren't followed through. Because, Mr. Speaker, in July, we did pass a resolution here at the heart of chaos in this country. And those resolutions, Mr. Speaker, went to the president of this country. And among the issues that were supposed to be dealt with, apart from just compensation of young people who were affected during the, uh, the Gen Z movement, Mr. Speaker, we also implored upon the president, Mr. Speaker, that the issue of abductions be responded to very strongly, Mr. Speaker. The reason why I'm bringing this, Mr. Speaker, is because Senator the Eddie, abductions that are happening... Thank you, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the reason why I'm bringing this up is because the abductions that are happening in this country are happening at two, at two levels. One, within structured authorities of governance in this country, and number two, outside those structures. But I think that if, the, if there is a force in dealing with the issues of abductions within structure of security in this country, Mr. Speaker, there will be an equal response to those who are doing it outside the structure, Mr. Speaker. And therefore, Mr. Speaker, I wanted to inquire, and perhaps uh, the majority leader can help us on this, Mr. Speaker, that if we end up uh, having some resolutions in this house, Mr. Speaker, that can be able to pick on some of these issues that we are seeing in terms of, of, of abductions in the country, Mr. Speaker, that sometimes end up affecting the security infrastructure, Mr. Speaker, can we know how if they're not responded to, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker? Proceed, Mr. Th th thank you, Mr. Speaker. I'm and and I, 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 I think that it starts by making sure that the, the abductions that happen within the security infrastructure in this country, Mr. Speaker, are dealt with for once and for all, Mr. Speaker, so that those who are doing it outside of the security infrastructure can take it more serious, Mr. Speaker, that. You are saying point of order and, and young people are dying outside here, young people are being abducted and they are becoming uneasy when there is no security infrastructure in the country. What is your point of order, Senator We have heard you just shouting. Uh, Mr. My, my mic. My mic. Hi. Mr. Speaker, understanding order 105, I have listened to Senator Eddie Oketch talking about abductions happening within the structures of government and outside other structures. And Mr. Speaker, you know, there is, there is, there is an allegation there being placed on, I'm not even sure whether he's targeting an individual in government, whether he's, because he has also mentioned the president at one point, can he substantiate these structures within government where he's saying that are being used for abduction? Perhaps he knows of a unit, a particular unit that he can even just mention, so that even us as senators, we can come out and call out that unit. We would like to know which is this inside government maybe and if he cannot substantiate he must apologize and withdraw because this is the upper house this is not the national assembly this is a house of records a house of procedure and we we carry ourselves with facts mr speaker let him substantiate mr which you have to substantiate the structured abductions.
Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, uh, Mr. Speaker, I was very clear about the document which is a resource of this house that has gone to the president. In that document, we were very clear about a, a number of issues that we complained about. Unless Senator Gloria was not in this house to listen to what was being discussed in this house, Mr. Speaker, I, I am very clear in my mind, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, let me, let, let me say this, Mr. Speaker. Maybe Senator Gloria is comfortable because any of her family members have never been abducted. But abduction of young people in this country must stop. And they happen within, within the structure of security in this country as well as outside the structure of this, this, this country. You might make noise as much as you want, but I can assure you that one day your own family member or your own relative will be abducted and you won't be, you won't be sitting pretty. We, can, we must stop that, that the pressure of young people in this country. It must stop. Now, order, Senator Joyce Correct. Order, Honorable Senator. This, this is the House. Senator Eddy, you are supposed to address the chair, not your colleagues. You've been called upon to substantiate on an allegation that you've, uh, you've made. Order, honorable senators. Mr. Speaker. Sit down, Senator Eddie. Where are you going? <laughs> <laughs> sit down. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> sit down. <laughs> the chair is speaking. <laughs> Senator <laughs> Fokilifi, let the chair handle this. Now, now, Senator Roba rose on a point of order on this allegation that you've said there are structured abductions within the system. So, you've been called upon to substantiate those allegations. What did you mean by structured abductions within government? Instead of responding to that, you've been shouting back at your colleagues. Proceed, Senator Eddy, to substantiate. If you're not in a position to do that today, you know exactly what to do. Mr. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Mr. Speaker, the senator behind you, Mr. Speaker, it is not my role as a senator of Migori to focus the senator or Ruba in this house. I refer to a resolution, a resolution of this house, Mr. Speaker, that is a property of the house passed by all of us. And Order. that resolution, Mr. Speaker, Order. that resolution, if you read it, Mr. Speaker, it, is, it talks about abductions and killings that this Senate was tired of addressed to government, Mr. Speaker. If it is addressed order, to government, Mr. Order, Speaker, and Senator. it has not been responded Senator to, Mr. Eddie. Speaker... Senator Eddy, order. Senator Joyce, I caution you. You proceed, I'll throw you out of the chamber. Now, Senator Eddy, Senator Eddy, look for that document and read the particular resolution that you're relying on. And I'm giving you to do that tomorrow. You may not be able to get the document right away. Look for that document and read that particular resolution that supports your allegation. Mr. Speaker, that is... Proceed. Have a seat. Mr. Sit Speaker, down. I hadn't finished. Down, they ate on my time, Mr. Sit Speaker. Down. They ate on my time. Sit down. Take Mr. your seat. Mr. Speaker, you're giving them so Senator They ate on my time. Take your seat. <laughs> Senator... <laughs> Senator Omtata. Senator Fokilifi, you know there is no senator on their feet. You cannot raise on a point of order. No, no, no. He was still standing there. Excuse me. Yeah, but he... <laughs> Proceed. Uh, Mr. I did not refuse you. You don't catch my eye. <laughs> Proceed, Senator Omtat. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, sir, thank you for the opportunity. The question of abductions... It's a very serious question. Kenya is a republic, a government of law, and you have got institutions that have been mandated to take care of the security of the citizen. And these institutions are basically in terms of uh, civilian 
order the police. Our streets cannot be an area where people can abduct others, disappear others, run illegitimate detention centers, and then release them, and there are no consequences. When these people are re released, Mr. Speaker, sir, I have not heard of any incident whereby the abductees have been guaranteed security and the government security apparatus summoned them to a debriefing to try and identify where they were being held and why they were being held. And that points to collusion by the police in the ongoing abductions. To make matters worse, Mr. Speaker, sir, it's a matter of fact that the capacity of the police to investigate this kind of uh, activities, if at all they involve the police forces, has greatly been eroded. And this was done deliberately under the last command of Inspector General Kome, whereby officers who are trained to deal with this kind of matters and who are housed at the internal affairs audit, uh, in, internal affairs unit of the National Police Service were systematically transferred out of station. The unit was starved of funds. 